Here we have an Asus laptop that came in for no power. I told Big Boss not to disassemble the whole motherboard because I want to see if the problem is from this side of the board before we spend more time and disassemble the board. But before we start working on this laptop, let's read what the customer wrote. Laptop stopped powering up. It doesn't appear to even take a charge any longer. I opened it up and it doesn't appear to have any water damage. I would suspect it's a MOSFET issue. Why would the customer mention anything about water damage? Right? It's like saying, I did not stab that person with a six inch knife. Who mentioned anything about stabbing or how big the knife is? When I read something like this, I suspect we have liquid damage. I just want to quickly go over the board, looking for liquid damage. If we do not find any, then we're going to start measuring a lot of voltage rails on the board and try to figure out why this laptop is not powering on. We do have the DC MOSFETs right here. That's the DC jack. We have the current sense resistors, and I do see some corrosion, right? Or maybe that's not, maybe that's glue from the heatsink or something. Whatever. It's not a problem. It doesn't look problematic. And all that stuff, people ask, what's that stuff on the CPU and GPU? Newbies. That's thermal paste. Do not clean thermal paste. A lot of times we get laptops in where that thing, the CPU, is shining like a mirror. We all have to learn at one point in life, but you should not experiment with an expensive laptop. And knowledge is power. That's why I share all those videos so people can learn. People benefit and I benefit. I benefit how? People mail their stuff over for us to fix. I benefit from monetization. The business benefits from e-commerce, sponsors, 101 ways. But I spend a lot of time making those videos and I share whatever knowledge I can on those videos. I do not hide anything. Whatever I'm doing, from step zero to step 10, I show everything. Oh, look at this, look at this. What's this? Most likely liquid damage. We do not know what's going on on back of the board. But right now, based on what I can tell, that's the only thing I see on this side of the board. Is this liquid damage? Maybe. Or maybe a cab just corroded. Whatever the case may be, this does not look good. Like I was saying, we have customers that came into our shop, few customers, they told me, why do you share your information, all the knowledge on YouTube? Aren't you going to have competition? Wouldn't that hurt your business? I told them it's the opposite. It actually flourished our business. For those who are in the same type of business, and the repair business or people that want to learn, by all means, just log into the videos and learn. So we give a helping hand to those people in business. And for 90% of people out there, they will mail their stuff over for us to fix. Look at those caps. We have three caps and none of them look good. I'm going to measure in diet mode. And we're going to measure for a short. And I cannot measure from here because that leg is totally gone. Look at this. We have a short circuit. 0, 0.00 reading. And on this side, 0, 0.000 reading. So resistance is zero. That short. And those are connecting in parallel. Short. We're going to get a short on all of them. Actually, no. Yes. No. Yes. What the... The probe is not making a good connection. Zero. Okay.
I mean, right now we have three caps, and I'm guessing at least one of them is good. I want to measure that good cap to get the capacitance value, so we know what to replace it with. Those are filtering caps, and the reason we have three of them in parallel is because they add up to a certain value. Instead of having one big cap, they split the caps in three, or four, or 10, or 20. That's why when you are looking at an iPad motherboard, or an iPhone motherboard, or a laptop motherboard, you see tons of capacitors around the CPU or around the power IC or whatever the case may be. Those capacitors, let's say on iPads, they are connecting in parallel. And the reason they are connecting in parallel is so they can make up a certain value. And that's why I say if one cap is out of the equation, if we remove one cap, the board will still work. Because if you have 100 police officers guarding a building and one of them called in sick, you still have 99 police officers guarding that building. Nothing is going to change. The same goes here. I mentioned this many times before, and I will mention it again because we keep getting that question. We have three caps here, so we have three sergeants right here. If one of them is out, we still have two. But just for the sake of this video, let's remove those caps one by one and see which one is shorted. Assuming we have one good cap on any one of the three caps that we see here. Right, so let's start with cap number one. And let's see, do we still have a short? If we do not have a short anymore, it means cap number one is the problem. I just want to make sure the pins on the chip are not touching because I do see corrosion on those pins. Right, so do we still have a short circuit? And we do. Do we have a short on this cap if we measure both ends? And I'm not reading a short on that cap. But then again, the lag is gone from the side of the cap. Maybe there's nothing to probe here. Do we still have a short? Now look at this, the short is gone. See, that's ground and the short is gone. So this guy is problematic. If we measure the guy from here to here, without that guy flying to the ninth dimension, because he can snap at any time, look at this. Zero ohms. That's the bad guy. Say hello to the bad guy. Now you can say goodbye to the bad guy. Hello, goodbye. And now we can measure the capacitance of this cap because it's not connecting in parallel with anything else on the board in that group. Let me turn my LCR meter on. Capacitance mode. A lot of times viewers ask, how do you know the value of that capacitor that you replaced? What, you think I look at the sky or at the stars and magically figure out the value? I went over it before. 6,000 times before. So when I make the video, I just replace the cap. I do not go stumbling looking for the value because I've done it before. But I do not magically get the number. Meter in capacitance mode. And let's measure the value of this cap. And right now, it doesn't look like we're going to get the right value because that cap is still in circuit. So let's remove it. I'm getting like 500 microfarads. That cannot be right. Why don't we measure this guy right here?
actually, no, let's not measure that cap. Because that cap looks like he's at the end of his life. We can go over this guy here. Five microfarads, perfect. Okay, we have exactly five microfarads. So it's five microfarads each. We got it. Right, so here we have three five microfarads capacitors. Let's go ahead and prep the board. Let's use our anti-glare light so we can get rid of the reflections. If you are in the same type of business or you are doing this as a hobby, you can purchase all your tools from Northridge Fix, including this amazing anti-glare light, microscope, soldering stations, hot air stations, the solder wire, plugs, whatever you need. Just log into northridgefix.com, click on shop, add to cart, check out pay, and we almost always ship out same day. So right now the top pad, they're all connecting as one. Same with the bottom pads. We're gonna start with cap number one. And then cap number two. And cap number three. All right. Very nice. It does not matter if the caps bridge because all of them are connecting to the same pad. This whole thing is one pad. So this can connect with this, can connect with this, and the same goes on the bottom. And it's stylish. Who has a laptop with caps like this? Unique. You can sell it for more money. And I'm going to add the labeling on here, N, F. Wow. Northwich Fix was here. Now, we do not know the condition of this chip, if the chip is good or it's not good or what's going on. I have no idea. But right now, we're going to measure for a short. Quick. I want to make sure we do not have a short circuit anymore. And we do not. Awesome. Well, that laptop power on. Let me plug the battery. Anything else disconnected? No. I do not know if the battery has a charge in it, but we're going to try it anyway. And I see nothing. So it could be that the battery is dead. Could be. Or we just wasted all that time for nothing. The charging cable is plugged in. I do see a light right here. Does a light mean a functioning laptop? I don't know. And I see lights on the keyboard. Are we going to get anything on the screen? No. Yes, no, no, yes. Sometimes Asus laptops, they take 
15, 20 seconds before they come on. What the? <laughs> What's going on? You know what? Let me disconnect the battery and just try it on the charging cable. Yes, yes. Yes, we got it. Wow. Whew. I skipped the heartbeat for a second. We did it. Awesome. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.